Hey guys, welcome back to The Average. Today I'm really excited because we're going to test out some new jelly paints from um, this shop called Magi Deal. I'm not really sure if they come from there, but I ordered these off Amazon and bought them all individually and they finally arrived, so we're going to test them out. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your beautiful online presence and run your business. Okay, so let's get into using these paints. I thought because I have such an interesting view now that I would like to paint it because I think it makes sense to give it a go. The landscape is quite lovely and the way the hills are in the distance, that's Spain, it looks just beautiful with the clouds and the sea in front. I just thought I needed to give that a shot and try and make an interesting composition from what I'm looking at in real life. And I'm gonna be using these new jelly paints, so let's try and open them. Like I said, I bought these all individually off of Amazon. A few of them arrived together and then some of them didn't. So they probably come from like different places, but they're all of the same brand. And they're all 80 milliliters. Probably where they're from, they're quite cheap, but I bought them at probably about eight, no, eight euros, probably about seven pounds each, probably about six dollars i'm just guessing those amounts they're quite pricey for what they are and but there's more to them than the other jelly paints they're definitely in bigger pots i bought these three because i thought i should have primary colors and i bought a black and i bought this one because i couldn't resist this beautiful lilac color i will be using white probably from my other acrylics because i couldn't find a white but let's test these out i'm going to use these mostly and let's see if i can create this landscape by just using these new jelly paints. Okay, this came off really easily. Somebody did give a good tip in my last jelly video with all the lids that if you use a heater over the top, it will melt the glue. And I didn't think of that, and I think that's a really clever tip. So if you guys buy these kind of jelly paints and then struggle with the lids, I think that's probably the way to go. This one has separated a little bit from like the oil, I guess. I guess this is an oil-based um, gouache. It looks oily, so I'm just, I'm completely guessing there. I wouldn't listen to me, actually. Never mind. <laughs> I'm just going to mix it back in together. Okay, I'm going to use this uh, little mixing box. Somebody gave me the good tip to use their lids as a swatch, and I thought that was, like, very clever. Okay, so let's just plonk these down, I guess. <laughs> I think a little obviously goes quite a long way with this stuff because there wasn't that much paint on these lids, but it looks like I can probably fill this whole page of colour if I wanted to. Do you like the way it handles, if that makes sense? Like it does feel quite nice, it's moving quite easily around with my paintbrush, it's being pushed quite well. Some paints are like, uh, you're trying to manipulate it a little bit with your paintbrush and it doesn't really work out, so but this one is quite nice. The black does seem super opaque, which is really nice, because when you use black you do want it to be like proper dense black. So like I said before, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and it offers such a great range of website building tools for you. I use Squarespace to host my portfolio site and I, I really felt like it was useful to have something for people to go to to search for your name and to see your artwork. In the future, I'm thinking about selling my comics using my own commerce website on Squarespace and I think that would be really handy. I just took a template that I liked and I went with it and then I just uploaded a lot of images that I thought were interesting and then I went to the about me page and I wrote a little bit of a description about myself and it was super straightforward and easy to use. Please head to the link in the description if you would like 10% off your first purchase of your website or domain. Look down below for that link. So I have been watching a lot of um, like abstract art kind of tutorials, not tutorials, but um, documentaries on YouTube. There was one in particular that was um, like a six part series from BBC One. And I found it really interesting because it explained why people 
did abstract art or like the meaning behind it and I really enjoyed it and there was something in particular that struck me was the just um, mark making and the importance of it and I really felt like I wanted to bring that forward into this piece a little bit. Not that I'm doing an abstract piece or anything but just that I wanted to make it more impressionistic if that makes sense so I didn't want to have like a photorealistic view. I mean I suppose I've done that a lot in the past is made these sort of thick shapes within the image and built around that but that was kind of my plan for this. In the beginning I made a very prominent decision, prominent decision yeah, to make a yellow under painting so the colours would shine through to bring that vibrancy. The painting overall won't have any kind of yellow tones but when you do an underlay of a colour it shines through and it affects all the colours around it and I really think it's very important to do a, a colour underneath and I think it really helped with this situation to show that we're looking at one piece of scenery and bring all the colours together into a sort of colour family. I think that a lot of people leave out that step and that's something I used to do as well was just not have an underpainting and it really helps um, so I suggest giving it a go. For this piece I wanted to be really free and I hope that it shows in that um, aspect because as I was painting the clouds and looking at the scenery it was obviously changing as I was doing it because it was real life and I kept looking out the window and looking back and then even at nearer the end of the day it was kind of getting a bit more cloudy and grey rather than this bright um, sunshine that we see at the beginning. So I had to kind of rely on my own memory of what I had seen but also trying to depict what was there at the beginning but also is there now so I was kind of blending as I was going and just making it up as I went along a little bit but looking as well at real life and it felt like it really helped the piece come to life a little bit because it was just and I was chasing light a little bit further on with the buildings because I start out with these buildings and I make a decision to make it more from my own mind and taking stuff from what I was seeing and make my own composition from the beginning and then I realised that maybe doing that was detrimental to how I was painting this because I was looking at the buildings but I was also trying to imagine what I wanted the composition to look like so when I went to put them together the perspective didn't really make sense and it was difficult to envision that and I think I made a harder task for myself by making up part of the visual instead of looking at one fixed point of um, my view which I didn't do, I just kind of went for it. But in the end, I think I really prefer it. I do mess around with the buildings. I only painted three in the beginning, and I realised that that looked really weird, like there was just this big grey area in the lower left, and I thought, I don't really like the way that was looking, and I really wanted the mountains and the sky to be more of the vocal point, if that made sense. And so I went back in and I started to, to um, add more buildings, um, as they go down the slope towards the sea you can see lots of different roofs and patterns of houses and stuff so I decided that I wanted to obviously make that part of the image and I did and I think it makes it more visually interesting definitely than just having a big block of grey roof and then another block of grey roof and I felt like it really added to the picture but then also I had the problem where I was adding a lot of stuff and it was getting a little bit too complicated so I went in and I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to have fun with this. I'm going to block out shapes with different colour. I'm going to match colours, even though maybe that building's not necessarily the same colour as the other building, to round off the colour family within the image. And I really started to enjoy the painting again. It became less hard work and more enjoyable again. So I started making blocks of colour and just kind of going with it and feeling the motion of the, the picture and just kind of forgetting that I had to get something that was detailed and on point and when I started to do this I realised that it was really coming together a little bit better. Am I 100% happy with this picture? No, but I feel like I learnt a lot from doing it and also I think that it does look good, it's interesting to look at. It's not perfect but I think most things that I do are not perfect and if we strive for perfect then we'll never get anywhere so I'm glad that I did this, I think it looks very nice, I might hang it on my wall. I really like the colour composition of it and there are things in it that irritate me but that's it. I think that's what I'm just going to leave it as because 
I really like the way the forms just feel and sit and rest together and as well the colours overall just work and I'm really glad that I just loosened up rather than try to be finicky because I don't think I'm a finicky artist, I think I'm definitely a loose painter so it makes more sense to me to just follow what I I like to do. And in the end I think that came out as a better result when you just follow what you know and you follow what you are interested in doing as well because I felt like because I was trying to push a certain direction that wasn't really me, it just didn't, it came off as that. Whereas just going for what I enjoyed painting, it it made it around a picture, it worked better. So that would be my suggestion to you guys is like not always think like you have to paint really realistically or in a certain style, just try and follow what you enjoy. Okay, so I think that's the end of the painting. I might mess with it a little bit more because I can't seem to stop. But I think it's final. I think I need to stop painting it now. And yeah, I quite like it. I like parts of it and other parts I'm still wanting to fight with. But I'm just going to leave it now and let it breathe and maybe look at it again tomorrow but I think for now it's done I said that like 500 times overall the jelly paints were really nice and I really liked them I think they were a bit oilier or something so they took a while to dry long a little bit longer than the other jelly paints not sure if the formula is different or something but yeah they were okay to work with once I got used to that fact thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video there is a link down in the description thanks for watching please like and subscribe for more and I'll see you next time bye